the next big question is, since our accounting for derivatives is fair value, changes in fair value go through the income statement, we have to get our hands around how do we fair value a forward contract or a futures contract? Well, a futures contract is quite simple. Since a futures contract is exchange traded, we simply have to go to the futures market We simply go to the futures market and we get a level one fair value. We're just going to look it up, right? Because these are exchange traded, they're identical contracts, identical assets traded in an active market. We can just go and figure out what is our level one fair value. So futures contracts are very simple to value if they are indeed futures contracts traded on the exchange market. Forward contracts, a little bit different. A little bit different. Unsurprisingly, I can still go to the futures market to help out. because it is possible that the forward contract I write has a similar type of asset sitting in the futures market. So I can use, again, level one is a market approach. I can use a market approach for my forward contract by looking at similar assets or similar contracts in the futures market. To determine the fair value. Since these are observable inputs by market participants, this market approach is observable inputs. They're not identical assets, right? Only, only futures to futures can be identical assets in level one. But because they're not identical, but they are similar assets to our forward contract, these are gonna be level two fair values. That's a very simple way of valuing a forward contract. Now, what if, and you have you as a as the accountant, you have the choice. You don't have to use a market approach. You can always use an income approach. Well, how do you income? How do you do a fair value income approach on a forward contract? Well, let's think about that. So we're going to use an income approach. on a forward contract. We will assume for a moment that all of these inputs are observable to market participants. So we're gonna make that, that, that is an assumption. So how do we do this? Well, we go back to our variables. We start thinking about the different variables that have to be in here, right? Here's our different variables. We need to know the inception date, the maturity date, and the price that we're gonna buy or sell it, right? Those are gonna be three particular items. Obviously, the asset, the counterparty is all important, but we need to at least understand at the inception date, maturity date, and whatever the price is, okay? So I like to maybe draw this as a little bit of a, a graph here, right? So here we have and here is inception date. And here is transaction date or maturity date. Those are my two dates. So we're entering into the contract here with the objective of 
transacting business on this date in the future. And we've determined that, and this is price per, right? This is dollars per unit of the asset, right? We've determined that we are going to transact the business. We're gonna do this trade at, we'll say this is gonna be $5 per unit, okay? So that's $5 per unit, okay? That's what we're going to transact the business, $5 per unit, that's our agreement. And we paid no money up front for that. Now, we are looking at this period of time, maybe this is one year. And we're looking at our value, if you will. You know, and let's assume when we entered into this, the price or the forward price one year out was indeed $5 per unit, okay? This price. So we are entering into this transaction. The forward price is $5 per unit. Everyone agrees that that is the fair value. Eh, that the fair value is zero at this point in time. Yeah, I, I, we, I'm gonna come back to this because I don't agree. I don't agree that we paid zero dollars to enter into this forward contract, and so therefore the fair value is zero dollars. I don't agree with that, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But what we want to do is, as if we move to the next day, right? So here's inception date. We go one day into the future, right? What happens if the forward price goes from $5 to $6 per unit, okay? And I was going to buy this at $5, right? This is a forward purchase, right? So this forward contract is a forward purchase contract, all right? So the forward price I agreed to is five. The next day, the price goes to six. Have I made money on this particular contract? That's the question you gotta ask yourself. Is this more valuable to me now than what it was when I entered it? And the answer you should come to is yes. I can buy it at five, and the next day it went to six. If I had waited one more day, I probably would be buying it at six. So the fair value of this contract has gone from zero, which I kind of disagree with, to something more than that, All right? So what we look at here is we look at this differential, this forward, and this is the forward price. We look at the forward price differential of $1. That's the delta that $1 change times how many ever units. That is theoretically your fair value. So your $1 change times the number of units is how much this contract's gone up in value. Now, I have a problem with making that broad assumption. So, because if we were looking at buying 100,000 units, this contract is now worth $100,000. But I disagree. Because one of the things that I have to consider is that's a year away or 364 days away. There has got to be some ability to say there's got to be interest involved, right? What's the time value of this, of this 100,000, right? If I had the money today, how much would I have to invest in order for it to be worth $100,000 sometime 
364 days in the future. And that's the exact same thing with this idea that it's zero dollars. Because there's a time value of money associated with this contract. And so while it looks like on its face at inception that we didn't pay any money, we're doing it at the forward rate, there's a, we still have to factor in the time value of money and get a and discount what this number is back to today's dollars. So in this particular case, I would have to start coming up with a, because I know that I have a value of 100,000 here, I have to come up with a discount rate for this particular contract and figure out what is the present value of this $100,000 gain. And then that is gonna be my fair value on this day. How do I calculate the discount? Well, we talked about how do, how do we come up with discount rates earlier. And in this particular case, because this is a forward contract, a private contract, the counterparty that owes me money, I would have to factor in whether or not they would actually execute on this contract and whether or not I would have credit losses, as well as other variables, geography, industry, inflation, et cetera. But we always start with a risk-free rate, a one-year bill rate would be fine here because we've got a one-year deal. And then we'd build a discount rate on top of that to figure out what is the net present value of this 100,000. If you don't believe the interest, interest is a significant factor in coming up with your fair value, then you wouldn't necessarily have to do this. I always default to making sure I know what is the present value because that is the fair value that I would get if I sold this contract today.